Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jonathan Blackburn. I will be uh, hosting the webinar today on uh, Vortex Spaces with uh, Cabinet Vision. So uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to uh, join me today. Hopefully you'll be uh, learning something uh, useful. I'm sorry, I, I just started a couple of minutes late. My computer decided to uh, reboot itself on me uh, right, right before uh, the beginning of the meeting. So um, we'll start right away. Um, what we'll do today is uh, basically I'll just take a cabinet vision project, um, give you a couple of tricks on, on uh, you know, what to do with your cabinet vision project and, uh, you know, how to, how to optimize it, give you a couple of tricks. Uh, then we'll bring that into uh, Vortex Spaces, adjust the materials, adjust the lightings um, and all that. And then uh, like bring it all the way up to uh, the point where we can uh, record a video um, and save the, uh, the images with the, uh, with the application. Um, the application that we're using today for connecting is called Zoom. Um, you will see if you look somewhere on your screen, you should see a button where you can chat with me. So um, I cannot hear you if you uh, if you speak or whatever. So if you have any questions, uh, just open the chat box and, and type anything that you want there. I'll be seeing it uh, and I'll be able to answer your questions. Uh, don't wait until the end um, uh, of the webinar to ask your questions. I, I most likely prefer to uh, answer them uh, when, when is the right moment. Uh, what, you know, when we're talking about something specific. So um, yeah, uh, just let me know if there is anything. Uh, so what I'll do now, I'll just uh, start sharing my whole screen here uh, so you get to see everything. Um, so first, you know, what, what is Vortex Spaces? Uh, you know, Vortex Spaces is a tool that will help you increase the quality of your, uh, you know, presentation for your customers in, uh, you know, a very short period of time. So the idea is that uh, you take your cabinet vision project you bring it inside spaces and within about 15 minutes you can uh, you know adjust all of your materials all of your lighting and get all of your images ready and then from there if you want to record a video it's uh, you know maybe another 10 minutes to record a, a walkthrough video visit with your project so uh, you know it will help you sell more projects uh, quicker because of videos uh, you know basically the effect of videos on your customers will be incredible um, they will they will have a better sense of the room. They will better feel, uh, you know, the space uh, the, the space between the different objects by seeing it moving inside a room. Uh, so it makes it very easy. Um, so uh, what I'll do? I'll just open my cabinet vision project. As you can see, this is a uh, you know just uh, like a regular project. Um, a couple of tricks that I like to give people. Um, before I export uh, to spaces. And it's not something that you have to do. You're not obligated in any way of doing it. Uh, you know, basically with spaces, uh, whatever you put inside it will look better when you put it in there because you have the real materials, you've got real reflections. Uh, but you know, like the, the, the nicer project that you, uh, you push inside, uh, the nicer uh, project will look uh, when it comes out at the end, I guess. So, uh, you know, a couple of tricks, try to uh, close the walls as much as possible inside your projects. I know that most cabinet vision users uh, typically will just do uh, like U shapes, for example, or L shaped walls, um, like for lighting effects and for lighting up the room, it's always easier if, uh, you know, it's a closed space. Um, also, you know, if you can put a couple of windows maybe, uh, so like that you can get more sun effect that will come inside the room. And um, also, you know, uh, put a couple of decoration items. Uh, you know, you don't have to spend a half an hour, just uh, maybe two, three minutes and place a couple of decoration items. Um, like in this case, for example, you know, I've got my table there, I've got a couple of stools, I've got a computer uh, right there on the, uh, on the countertop, I've got some utensils on uh, the countertop here and, um, and I think I've got, yeah, some, something more on the, uh, on the oven. Uh, you know, and, and what I've done myself is that um, like the, it's a mix of, uh, you know, decoration items that were already built in my Cabinet Vision uh, program and also a couple of SketchUp objects that I've imported inside Cabinet Vision. Uh, that I just save inside my own catalog. So now I have a catalog of maybe like 10 or 12 objects that I use in pretty much every cases. Uh, so, you know, whenever I'm done with my project, I just open that decoration catalog and place a couple of things. You know, like I said, you don't have to spend much time on, in, in, into that, you know, but just having one or two objects inside the room will just make it uh, look a little bit more real. You know, it looks like uh, somebody's been there. So uh, again, it will help your customer feel that they're already inside that room. So um, what I'll do now, I'll just go in the, in the 3D view just to show you a little bit more stuff in, uh, of my project. Um, so as you can see here in that, in that room, uh, you know, everything in, in that CAD drawing will be important inside spaces. So all of the objects will be there. 
Uh, then after that, if you spend time, you know, uh, putting your textures on, on materials inside Cabinet Vision, they will all be showing up inside spaces as well. But the nice thing with spaces is that you don't have to do that. So, you know, if, if it's already done, you know, good thing, uh, congrats. Uh, but if you haven't, I, I've not spent time into, uh, you know, adding textures inside uh, CV, then uh, it's, it's your day of luck because like we take care of that for you in spaces. Uh, then uh, inside this project, as you can see, there's a couple of like green cones uh, around the room. Those are light placements in Cabinet Vision that you can put uh, in pretty much any views. Uh, you know, you can go in uh, plan view, add a couple of lights. You can do it uh, like from even within a cabinet. Um, you can position your lights inside Cabinet Vision. You can also do it in spaces. Um, there, there's no better place to do it. Uh, you know, you can do it on one side or the other, uh, like there's no re real biggest uh, advantage in doing that. Um, it's only that uh, in most cases, if you add your lights inside spaces, you'll probably end up using less lights um, because in spaces, whenever you add a light, you already see the result of that light. So you know exactly when you've, you've had enough uh, light inside your, uh, your project. So uh, when I'm ready to export my Canada Vision project, all I have to do is go uh, in the 3D view here and click on utilities. And then from there, click on Export Collada. And uh, here where it says uh, Save as Type, I'll just switch that to a Vortex file. And here I'll just call it like Webinar CV and save it. Um, now I'm just saving it on, on my uh, desktop. Exporting the whole project is, you know, a couple, a couple of seconds, maybe 10 seconds uh, overall. Uh, depending on the size of the project, some projects will be faster or some other ones will be uh, a little bit slower. Uh, but see, like now it's already done. So what I'll do now, I'll just open my uh, Vortex Spaces. Uh, this is uh, basically the start screen when you first uh, open up. So on the left side, this is uh, Inspiration Scenes. Uh, everyone uh, that downloads the application will have access to those. Uh, they are like kind of demo projects that you can open and play with. And then on the right side, I've got all the different projects I've been working on, uh, you know, in the past on my computer. Um, in this case, what I want to do is click on Add New Project. And I'll just go and select my webinar CV uh, VOK that is on my desktop there and click on open. Uh, now Spacer will ask me if I want to keep the same name so I can just like keep it like that or uh, for example, I can just add a space or whatever. And that will become the name uh, of my project. Oh, I have a question here uh, asking me if you have to have photo vision to export your project. Um, I, I don't think so. I don't know. I, I don't think you need to have photo vision, uh, but you do need to have uh, cabinet vision uh, nine and up. So, uh, you know, like with cabinet vision, uh, like eight, for example, you don't have the export be okay, uh, but you have it uh, starting at version nine normally. Um, so now we're inside the project. And as you can see, you know, like those textures and everything, like they all come from cabinet vision. So th those are the textures that we're using cabinet vision. But now it looks a little bit more like a like a video game. So you know, it's a, it's a room where I can just move around, uh, go in like every corners if I want. So uh, first thing you need to know uh, when you open the project like that is uh, how to move around. Uh, you know, we've tried to make it as intuitive as possible, mixing like uh, different controls that we found in, in, in different types of software um, that we like. So you know, it's not exactly like Envision or it's not exactly like SketchUp. You know, it kind of uh, just takes the best of both worlds as much as possible. So uh, to move around, you can use the mouse, for example. So like with the mouse, if you use the left click and hold, uh, it's just like if I was turning my head. So you know, I'm staying in the same position, just looking in different directions. Uh, then after that, I can also use my uh, right click and that's called a pan. So with a pan, it's just like if I was putting my hand on a screen like that and moving the image around. So like it's, it's very easy to go up and down, left and right inside the project. You can also use the wheel. So, you know, if you wheel in or, or uh, wheel out, like you'll just go in and out in the project, but it will also follow where you put that mouse. So, you know, if I put it on the, like right there on, on the kettle, or if I put it uh, here, you said like it will just zoom in wherever I put my mouse around. So it makes it very easy to, you know, just basically go around depending on what you're pointing on. <coughs> Pardon me, uh, like that. Uh, you also have uh, when you scroll and you've got um, like a slow uh, slow scroll. So if you hold Control while you're scrolling, you see now you're just moving like but very very slowly. So if you want to go like in very specific place, 
it's very easy to get like very very close by otherwise like you'll just go straight past it uh, so it's a bit harder uh, you can also use uh, your keyboard to move around so if you use like left and right arrows uh, you'll be turning on yourself uh, from one direction to the other up and down will make you go uh, you know forward and backward inside the project uh, you can also use page up and page down if you want to look up and look down on the keyboard and then last thing you can also hold shift on the keyboard and now if I go left and right you see I'm just sliding from one side to the other and then uh, up and down now I'll just go like still back and forth but now in the same direction as where I'm looking like that so now that we know uh, how to move around uh, I'll, I'll get to show you uh, how to change those materials so uh, you know like I said one of the nicest thing with spaces is that we, we work uh, in collaboration with most of the suppliers uh, in the industry uh, to bring you images that will be scaled uh, you know with the right scale uh, non non repeatable uh, textures so you don't see any uh, repeat patterns uh, anywhere you look um, we also as much as possible try to uh, you know reflect the have the, the right reflection and shine of uh, each of the finishes that we put inside um, so like to change the, the material it's pretty easy you just do a quick click on whatever you want to change and uh, it will start flashing in red so that means that this is my active selection and from there, uh, it will bring up a category. Uh, when we import the, a cabinet vision project, in most cases, um, we know what category of object it is. So uh, we will know if it's a cabinet, a countertop, a backsplash, a floor, a wall. Uh, so there's different categories like that. So as much as possible, we try to bring the right category to pop up whenever you select on something. But you know, in any case, if you want to put something else, you can just click on all, and now you have access to all of the other categories as well. So in this case, I'll just keep uh, like a floor. So like when I click on a material like that the first time, it's, it's just putting it uh, like that on the screen so I can basically preview what it's uh, going to look like. Um, whenever I have one material selected, I also have a small window here with a rotation option. So I can you know just turn it around in one direction or the other. Like that. Oop. And then I can just click one more time and now it's been applied. Uh, so you, you see for the floor, it's pretty, uh, pretty simple because there's only one floor. Uh, then when we get to other stuff, you know, for example, like this countertop and the backsplash and what I've done in cabinet vision, I just made sure that they both had the same textures just to show you that, uh, you know, even if they are different categories, now that since they're using the same texture or the same color, uh, they'll all be grouped together by default. And uh, you know, if you want to break that group apart, basically you can just click a couple of times on the item. So you see like in this case, when I clicked the first time, it took everything that is using the same texture. Then if I click uh, you know, like once more like that, it will just drop the backsplash and select only the countertop. And then one more, now I'm just ending with this piece of countertop. So you know, the same thing like if I was starting from here. Uh, so it's like different levels of selection. And now I'll just end up with this uh, little piece of countertop there. So, you know, in pretty much any cases, you can always break the object down to only one part, um, except for, like, I guess, uh, very specific cases. So in this case, what I'll do, I'll just go and select everything except my uh, backsplash and go and apply a countertop on that. Um, when I go and look in my countertop, you see here, I've got like, all those different categories of countertops. And there is something that is very nice. Let's say I want something that is uh, like white. I can just type like white there. Uh, and it will bring me all the different countertops that will be kind, kind of white. So even some with patterns, but if the overall color of the countertop is kind of white, it will just bring it to me like that inside my project. So I can just go in and circle through all those different options like that. You can also put, you know, if you know uh, the exact number of, uh, of the countertop or the exact name, you can just put that in the, in the search button that will work as well. Um, now uh, I'll just go and change my backsplash to something. What is it? Just a white and turn it like that. Then after that, I'll go and pick my cabinets. As you can see I, here for my cabinets, I had two different colors set up in my cabinet vision. So uh, by default, when I first click, it will only select everything that was in one, one shade of color, basically. But if I was to go and click one more, now I'll just end up selecting all of my cabinets. So in this case, I'll just go um, like that and go and put a color. So as you can see here, I can just go and change it whatever I want. 
like that. Um, then uh, also, you know, like the doors, for example, like the doors are white right now, but uh, you know, like I mentioned before, we, we try to match the texture and the reflection of the of most of the finishes. So even white doors, for example, I will always suggest people just to go in and use a, a white melamine and put it on there instead. So like that, you'll, you'll get better reflection. Uh, right now we don't see much reflections because I haven't started playing with the lights, but you'll see like that, that project will just come to life as soon as you start playing with the lights uh, this is something that uh, like like all the materials kind of uh, like turn to live um, there is also you see like right now on that back panel if I want to apply the same texture as the one on the doors for example instead of going all the way back and trying to find that same color I can click here on the in design button and when I do that I have access only to the colors that have been applied already inside that project so sometimes it will just make it a little bit easier uh, to go and uh, find find those uh, same materials and apply them again. Then after that, you know, anything that will be metal uh, needs to be replaced by one of the materials in spaces. First, because like all of our stainlesses and chromes and, and things like that, like they, they look like very nice. Uh, you know, like your, your whole project will just look more real uh, instantly when you start replacing the metals like that uh you know all of the accessories as well you can just go in and switch them to uh, other stuff like that and maybe that and even you know like the walls for example uh you know like, like for the same reason if you put a paint on the wall like the light will reflect differently so it's always better to do that so right now uh you see like pretty much all of my materials have been applied there is one thing here um So you see right now like this, uh, this yellow material that I've put there, um, I'll use what I call an emissive material. And uh, what is the emissive material? It's a material that looks like it's emitting a light. Uh, so, you know, when I use that uh, and, and to do that, basically any materials that you pick, uh, you can click on edit current material. And when I do that, it will bring a, a new window here where you can do some, some modifications to your materials. So in this case, you know, you can play with the smoothness. So as you can see here, uh, you see, you know, like right now it's very, very shiny and, you know, it will become like more matte when I move it around. So you can play with the smoothness. You can also play with the opacity so you can make it like transparent, all the way transparent or just a little bit. Um, the emissive, uh, you know, parameter, this is where, you know, you can do that. So like emissive materials, you use that mostly like whenever you have light box, uh, you know, that you want to uh, make it look like they are, they're uh, very bright. Uh, when you have LED panels, for example, this is uh, kind of things if you had, um, lettering on a wall, uh, like neon signs or, or stuff like that, you can use uh, emissive materials as well. You can have that in white, but you can also have that in colors. So, um, and, and you know, like that addition of material, you can pretty much do that with uh, almost any materials that you find. So, you know, for example, if you're looking for a floor like this one, but a little bit darker, uh, you can edit that one, uh, bring it a little bit uh, darker and uh, just save it again. So, and when, whenever you do that, you can give it a different name and uh, use it in other projects after. Uh, so now that all the materials are done, what we'll do, we'll start playing with the lights. Um, so to do that on the top right, you see I've got the light button there. So when I click on that, all of the lights that have been placed in Kevin Division will just uh, show up right here on my screen. And when I click on one of those lights, you see um, like it will start flashing, meaning that this is my active selection. In the case of the lights, what we do is that all of the lights that are at the same height level uh, would be grouped together by default. So uh, we're kind of assuming that they'll have the same job in life. So, you know, all those ones will be grouped together. The ones here will be grouped. The one on the table will be grouped. So like that, you just don't have to go and, and take one by one and uh, start adjusting them. Uh, but if, for example, that doesn't work for you, you can just use control on your keyboard and remove lights from that selection, or you can also add more lights to that selection. Um, so when you've got those lights selected, uh, there's a panel here where you can adjust those lights. So you see right now, um, like this is called a spotlight. We have two different types of, uh, of lights. So either a spot or a point. Uh, the spot is, is what you've seen right now. So it's a cone shaped light that starts from a small point and just go, uh, goes wider as it goes down. Uh, you can play here with the intensity of that light. So you, how intense it will look on your project. You can also play with the range and the range is basically how far the objects will be affected by that light. So you see right now, we increase the range and now like the light will be um, like seen on the floor. But if I put a shorter range, now it's only lighting up the countertop. Uh, you can also play with the angle of that light. 
like that to give different effects. You've got temperature, so you can make it a little bit more blue on one side or uh, more orange or red on the other side. And um, you know, this is one trick that I always like to give people: just play with different colors, lights. Uh, you know, this is what would happen in real life. Like, no, no two lights would be the same color exactly, uh, and it it will give different shades of uh, you know colors of uh, shadows and different uh, colors of reflections as well. So I always like to put, for example, like the lights underneath the countertop a little bit more bluish and the other ones a bit uh, warmer. Uh, so it, it brings, uh, you know, really nice effects. Um, then we also have uh, here, like, like I said, we have the spot. If I go and switch it to a point light, uh, so the point light is more like a ball of light. So as you can see now, it's, it's not just thrown in one direction. It, it will just emit light in every direction. Uh, since they're underneath the cabinets, it just looks like the whole like underneath of the cabinets is uh, is lit up. So in most cases, this is what I would use uh, to put underneath the cabinets like that, uh, with a bluish color and uh, just you know in, not too intense and uh, with a shorter range because I don't want really that light to um, you know project all the way down to my floor. Now I'll just go and pick this one and uh, use Control to add those two lights to my same selection again to uh, use them at the same time. There's a button here called IES profiles. When I click on that, it will first it will switch my light to a point light, but also it gives me a menu of different shapes of light beams, uh, basically. So you know when I go in and click on that, um, I'll just make it a little bit more intense again, like that. So you know what, like depending on the one I'll, I'll go and pick, uh, it will just give like different effects like that on the wall. So you know they, they're meant to look like uh, real lights being used in the real world. In this case, I'll just make them a little bit, a little bit warmer, uh, less intense, bigger range, like that. Uh, now I'll use the ones uh, right here, just put a little bit bigger range, like that. You know, a, a good thing what, like, to do when, uh, whenever you're setting up your lights, just try to make sure that you look at the floor at every time. So, you know, when you start adjusting your lights, uh, this is when you start creating reflections and shadows. And, uh, you know, if you put too much lights or not enough lights, then you just lose those shadows. And, and, and mainly the shadows are, uh, you know, what will make your project look like a real project and look alive. So you just make sure, you know, when you adjust it, you know, right now it's not enough. And now I guess it's pretty good because I see shadows. So uh, in this project, what I've done, you know, like most of the lights that I've placed in cabinet vision are more like uh, what I call utility lights. So, you know, they're, they're placed in position where you'll have actual lights inside the project. And what I like to do is add a couple of lights after that, that will be more like an ambient lighting. Um, so like mostly what I'll do is, uh, you know, when you click on that light button on the top right, then you have a bulb with a plus inside it. So when I click on that, I can basically just go and click wherever I want and add a light. And, uh, when I, I'll just go and switch it to a point. And when you click on that arrow, uh, here on top, you'll have like, uh, like a gizmo that appears around that light. So you've got three arrows. Depending on which arrow you click, you can uh, you know move that light in one direction or the other. So you know depending on the arrow you click, and with the little squares in the middle, it's you know I can move it in two different directions. So in this case, I move it up, down, left, right, but not towards me or uh, away from me. But you know as you can see, what's nice is that when I move it around, I, I basically uh, see exactly the effect of that of that light. So I know exactly where to go and place it. You know so I get like the best effect that I want. Let's go and just bring it like that. Got one more question. Oh, Denise is asking if uh, anybody else's uh, screen is frozen. So I don't know if, uh, if, if somebody else's is frozen. So I guess, I guess no, Denise, uh, maybe just you. Maybe you can try to, uh, uh, get off the meeting and just re-log in or something like that, like that might work. Or um, I don't know if you can refresh it. Otherwise, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I don't know exactly. So in this case, what I'll do, I'll just go and add uh, one more light, let's say like around like this. Like that. So now I guess I'm, I'm pretty good with my light. So now I'll just turn off, uh, turn off my light option. And also, oh, by the way, when, when you have the light uh, options on, if you click on anything, you will not be able to select any materials. So we kind of lock it up. So, you know, if you're trying to click on materials and it doesn't work, uh, you know, sometimes if you look in a direction where there's no lights, you, you, you might be wondering what's happening. 
but just make sure that you have that light button uh, deactivated here. So like that. Um, after, uh, when I'm done with my lighting, what I can do is click on the second button there uh, where I've got um, a couple more options. First one is called ambient intensity. So this is like the overall lighting. You know, as you notice, when we first got inside the project, it was not dark, uh, even if there were just a couple of lights and they were not adjusted. This is all because of the ambient intensity. So that's just like a general uh, lighting that even if I had absolutely no lights inside my project, uh, you know, it would not be uh, pitch, dark, uh, pitch dark. But what you have to know is that, that uh, the ambient intensity is not creating reflections or shadows or anything because it's not a light that comes from anywhere. Uh, so you know, it's always better to use the lights uh, manually inside the project, but with the ambient intensity, what I do normally is that when I'm done adjusting my lights, I'll just go and, and turn it down a little bit so it increases a little bit more of the shadows inside the project. Um, then you've got the ambient temperature, so like the overall feel of the like temperature of that room that you can play with as well. After you've got uh, stuff like the ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion, it's, uh, it's an effect, and you see that most of those effects are already turned on. Um, so, you know, they're already activated. You see them already. It's only that you can go and, and turn, uh, you know, tone it up or down a little bit, uh, depending on your preferences. But with that, you know, basically I can just go and increase intensity. So like the ambient occlusion is like shadows that you will set a corner of objects. And I can play with that, the range here. I'm gonna bigger or shorter as well. In this case, I'll just leave it pretty much how it was. Uh, after we have the sun, uh, the sun is a light that is positioned outside your project. And when you move around uh, like the direction with the sun, you'll see it coming inside the room. You can also play with the elevation and bring it like that inside your room. Uh, you know, what I do with the sun, you know, some people will try to match, uh, you know, where the sun comes at a certain time. You know, in my case, what I, I like to do is just make sure to hit as many things as possible. You know, like the sun uh, adds a lot of life to your project, makes it look like very real rapidly. Uh, so, you know, uh, if I can, you know, make sure that it hits, like, for example, like here, um, like, and you see the handle here in the shadows, you, you see like the shadows like through the, the like, chairs and stuff like that. So it looks very real and really nice as well. And that's it for the second button. Now if we click on the gear icon button, uh, we've got a bit uh, more options. First one is called field of view. Field of view, it's, uh, it's like a wide angle on a camera. So if you have a smaller room, for example, if you have a, a, a closet, if you have a bathroom, uh, or um, like, like any smaller rooms, I guess, you can just see a little bit wider of what you're looking at uh, in there. So, you know, when you move around, you just have to make sure, especially if you want to record videos, uh, that you don't use that too much because it will just kind of like deform everything on the outside of your screen. Um, but even, uh, even if it deforms, you know, like for example, in, in a small room, it's better just to deform everything and have a better view of, uh, of the room, a better sense of what it's gonna look like then uh, you know, it's staying just like a small portion inside the, inside the room. Um, then we have uh, what's called Bloom. Bloom is uh, where you've got bright stuff. For example, if you, uh, if you just look here and I'll just bring the intensity, you see like it kind of brings a fog on everything that is very bright inside the room. Uh, right now it's pretty too much. Then you've got a threshold that will just decide basically what will be affected by that bloom. So on, on the left here, pretty much everything is blooming and uh, on the right, nothing is. So, you know, again, like there, there's like preset the, uh, values there that you can, uh, you know, just leave there or go in and add or remove some. Uh, then we've got a sun shaft. Uh, sun shaft, I'll just talk about it in one second. Uh, vignetting will add a darker area around your screen. So it kind of like centers a little bit more of the focus of the person like in the middle uh, of, of the screen on where you're looking. Then we have uh, what's called sky boxes. Sky boxes are images that will be showing behind the windows. Uh, so they are three, uh, 360 degree images. So, you know, if I go in and put, put one here, for example, you see like it will match in all side of my, uh, my windows. Um, when I was talking about the sun shaft, like right now you can, you can see it pretty well. It's like, uh, it's an effect where when you see the sun through the window, you'll see like the beam of light that just comes in. Whenever you have your uh, skybox uh, picked, you can just go back to the same gear icon button there and you can rotate that skybox and turn it around. Uh, so you can basically just decide and you, you can also see that the sun will be affected by, by the skybox. So in this guy, I'll just go and maybe put it like a different one that will, let's go with this one. Um, 
like that. You can also play with the skybox exposure, making it brighter or darker. So depending if you want to make it look like a, like middle of the day or middle of the night, like that. Oops, like that. So that's pretty much all of, all of the settings inside the room. So now we're pretty much done adjusting the project. Um, what needs to be done after that is that uh, we can set up what's called the viewpoints. Uh, so the viewpoints in spaces will have a bunch of different uses. First one, uh, like it will help you just find yourself around inside your project. So, you know, you just find a view that you like, and then you click on plus. And then wherever I am, yeah, I just click on that, and then the camera will bring me back uh, right, right to that uh, same exact location. Then the second reason why we uh, pick viewpoints is that any viewpoints, whenever I save my project, will be saved as a rendered image. Um, so, you know, I instantly, it will take about 10 seconds to save my project, and then from there, I'll have like uh, my, my 10 renderings. Um, and the third reason why we uh, pick the viewpoints is for uh, the video walkthrough. So for the video walkthrough, basically we'll just go and visit the first point, go to second, next, and go around the whole project. So whenever you set up your viewpoints, try to think that, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of visiting that project. You want to see everything that uh, that's there and, and, and around, uh, you know, when you do a video visit, uh, you can also be a little bit more imaginative, I guess, when in, in, your, uh, in your points. You can have views where you can go up, for example, and show a little bit more of, you know, the space in between the countertop and, and, the, and the items. You can fly over objects. You can go around and, and do a bunch of different things. So in this case, I guess I'll just go and finish maybe here like that. Then on the bottom of that screen here, I've got like a speed where I can decide what speed to go in between uh, each of my points. Uh, you can also, if you click on that little pen there, you can rename those points. I could just call it a last point or I could call it oven or whatever. Then if I press play like that, uh, it will kind of preview what my uh, video visit will look like. So right now I'm in lower quality a little bit because I'm uh, live inside the application but at least I can preview basically what the, the camera path will be when I record my video. I can decide after that if I want to add more points or if I want to remove points. Uh, inside that list as well, like when I'm stopped, I can basically just shuffle my points around. Uh, so, you know, if I realize I want to insert a point between two and three, I can just add one and go and slip, you know, slip, slip it in between the, the two other points like that. Um, so now what I'll do, I'll just go and save, uh, save my project. To do that, on the bottom here, you just click on Save Design. Oh, and by the way, that uh, black menu on the bottom here, um, some, some people, sometimes they don't realize exactly what, what happens, but if you do a quick right click on your screen, that menu will just pop up or uh, disappear. So in this case, I'll just go and save it. I'll call it Option 1 and save. And now, as mentioned before, all of the points uh, that I've saved in my viewpoints will be saved as a rendered image. So when I click on gallery now, I've got all of my renderings that are ready to be sent to my customer already. And what's nice with those viewpoint rendering is that if I go back to my project, make any changes and save again, it will just delete them and put new ones instead. Um, so, so I don't have to go and manage uh, a bunch of different, uh, different files. If I wanted for, uh, for any reason, save a different version of that project. So let's say I wanted to go from there and, and just do like something different like this and, um, Maybe a different color melamine. Like that, and maybe I colors like that. So let's say I want to do that. So now I can I can just save it and call it option two and save it. And now what will happen is that it will just create uh, like a copy of that project with a different choice of materials. If I click on gallery now, I have all of my colors, uh, you know, uh, all my renderings are updated with the new colors. And, uh, you know, if I want to show it to my customer, I can just click on load design and now I've got option one and option two. So I can basically just go and shuffle from one side to the other. One other thing uh, that is very nice is that, uh, for example, I can go back to my cabinet vision uh, project and let's say I wanted to add something or uh, uh, I'll just go here in furniture. Uh, so let's say I wanted to put a wood stove in my kitchen. So, you know, like basically from there, I, I, like I can go and, and uh, like even take a cabinet, I can open the doors, I can open the drawers, uh, I, I can, uh, you know, make any changes, delete cabinets, uh, 
edit sizes or whatever. And, and then um, here, I'll just open them. And whenever I make changes like that in my cabinet vision, what, what I have to do after that, I just go back to my 3D view, utilities, export Colada, Vortex files. But now instead of typing uh, you know, a new name, I'll just go and find my uh, original file that is called webinar uh, CV. And I'll basically just save over it. So it says like, do you want to replace it? I'll just say yes. And now Canon Vision will re-export that project in about you know, a couple of seconds. And as soon as it is done, uh, Spaces will know that there's a new version of that project and will reload it. So I'll just turn my camera around so I can see, um, I can see when, when that happens. And uh, basically when it does that, it will just look at what was there before, what was changed and only reloads the difference. Uh, so, so in most cases, for example, if you go in and just stretch one cabinet, all of your cabinets will still be in the same material except that new stretch cabinet. So depending on what you change, uh, sometimes you might lose a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less. Uh, but in most cases, like uh, in this case, you see like all of my materials are still there. Um, I can even go, for example, just go and change that to a, a different material like that. And you see now when I look here, uh, my two doors, uh, like they they have this, like the right materials, except of my handles, I guess, because now space has just thought they were new, uh, new handles. I'll just go and put the bag in stainless steel. So you see that's as easy as that. And basically you can, you can reload the project just as often as you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can re-import it like 20 times if you want, uh, and you will not lose your settings of lights or materials. And then after that, um, you can, you can um, actually, before we go and uh, record a video, I'll just show you some settings because you know, on, on my computer right now that I'm using, I've got a pretty good graphic card um, and, and spaces uh, basically like the better the graphic card on your computer, the smoother or the fastest, uh, you know, like uh, spaces will act. But if you don't have uh, that good of a graphic card, it's not too bad because you can just go here in the settings performance and then you've got a super sampling setting. So, you know, if I, like right now I was at two, you know, if I go and bring it down to one, if you notice the image will become a little bit less crispy, a little bit more pixelated when I move around, but now everything will be much faster though. So, you know, like my selections of materials will be faster. It's like more uh, snappy uh, when you do that. So depending on, on, on the graphic card on your computer, you might want to bring that down. Um, if you have also like a super high resolution on your computer, for example, my, my second laptop is a Microsoft Surface book and, and that computer has like a super high resolution. On that computer, I can bring the super assembling down to like 0.5. It still looks really, really nice and really sharp on my screen, but it will uh, require a lot less performances out of my graphic card. So in this case, I'll just go and re-increase it. Uh, then in the settings, uh, there is a video and photo here. When you click on that, you'll have options for the video recording. So when you record a video walkthrough, you have options of uh, resolution. You can go from 720 all the way up to 4K. And uh, again, depending on your graphic card, you might not see a 2K and 4K. So we kind of limit, uh, li limit what people can record depending on the capacity of the graphic card. If you do have a very good graphic card on your computer and still don't see those uh, 2K and 4K options, please let me know. It's, uh, it's most likely, uh, um, because you, you like in most cases it's because people are using two different graphic cards on your on, on their computer and uh, sometimes we have to uh, kind of tell it to uh, to use spaces um, with a good graphic card um, so you know like I said if you have a good graphic card and you don't see the 4k option there just let me know and I'll help you uh, figure that one out um, then we have also the frame rate which is uh, how many images per second the software we record when uh, going through um, uh, the, the walkthrough um, this is a setting that personally I always leave it at 60 hertz. Uh, that will make a really, really nice difference uh, when you watch the video as everything is, looks more smooth. Um, then we also have a VR three, uh, 360 option. Uh, this one is a bet, better option, uh, but if you, want, have, uh, if you want to have access to it, just send me an email. I'll turn it on on your computer. You still need to have, uh, you know, you need to see the 4K option. Uh, but if you see that, just let me know and we'll just turn on the 360 option for your uh, computer as well. And what it does with 360 is that, is that um, 
instead of having one camera that goes around the project, it's like having six cameras that will film on both sides, up, down, uh, front and back. And then when you watch it, either on YouTube or a mobile, mobile phone or a tablet, it means you can just turn it around and see in all the different directions. So this is something that's very nice, very immersive for the customer as well. Um, then presented by, this is a name that will show up at the beginning of the video. So there people will put either company name, designer name. Uh, you can uh, pick the color of, uh, of that name. And then you've got upload to YouTube after recording. So this is um, an, an option I can turn on or off. Um, and, but we basically recommend people to use YouTube for uh, sharing the videos. Um, I'll just mention a little bit more about that. Um, while I'm, I'm uh, so what, what I'll do now, I'll just uh, start the video recording. Before you start recording the video, just make sure you go and position yourself on the first point in that list. Otherwise, the video will start from where you are and just start start recording until it gets to uh, the point zero. And then uh, from there, you just click on uh, record video. So now it will generate the video introduction. And uh, after that, we'll start going around uh, the project uh, by recording the video. So when I was talking about YouTube, um, well, I'll just open here uh, the YouTube page just to show you a little bit more. So what I was saying about YouTube is that we, we have a built-in upload to YouTube inside the app. So when the video is done recording, that means uh, it will ask me if I want to upload it to YouTube. And um, you know we do recommend uh, everybody to go in and share, share those videos on YouTube first because uh, YouTube is just like the biggest, widest, mostly uh, you know, known platform of video sharing in the world. Um, you know, if if uh, if your customer doesn't know what YouTube is, you know, it's like he's probably not your customer, I guess. So, uh, you know, it's very easy. Uh, after that, when you upload to YouTube, you don't have to send a large file to be downloaded. You just send, uh, you know, a video link and then uh, your customer will be able to open that, whether it's on his phone or on his tablet or on his smart TV or whatever. Um, so it makes it very nice. Um, we also offer an option of uh, what's called the rebranding of the application. So that's the reason why I just opened this, uh, this page of uh, Naples Closet. This is one of our customers down in Naples. And basically he took his own, um, his own animation template. So in the beginning of the videos, uh, it's an animation of his logo there. And then the walkthrough will start going around, uh, around his project. So, um, you know, like, Otherwise, like the standard logo would be the, the Vortex logo, but this is an option. Uh, for this option, it's a one-time fee of $750. Uh, we offer uh, 14, uh, 14 different uh, templates of animations that you can pick from. And uh, you know, it's not a yearly fee, so you just pay for it uh, once. And, uh, and you, you'll, you'll have it for, uh, for life, I guess, um, like that. Now I'll just show you, uh, if I go back to my channel, I wanna show you the 360 video. Um, 360 video, like here, for example. So with the 360 video, when you watch it on a computer screen, it means that I can use my mouse and, and look in other direction while, while the video is going around, uh, which is very nice. If it loads. So you see right now, like the video is going around the room, but I can still use my mouse and just look in any direction, go, you know, look up, look down while the video is moving inside the room. So, you know, like I said, if I do that with a, with a tablet, uh, or a tablet or a phone, like it will be like very, very nice for the customer. Uh, the overall quality of the 360 video is a little bit less than the regular video because it's, it's kind of stretched all the way, you know, uh, around you, um, but uh, it has a very, very, very nice and uh, immersive feeling. So now you see, uh, when I go back to my Vortex Spaces, it's recording right now. So it's kind of just going like slowly around the room like that. Um, you know, I, it's, it's not exactly like that, but you know, I always like to explain it like that. It's like almost every time like it, it moves a little bit, it's taking like 60 pictures. Uh, so, you know, that, that's why it's just going around the room. So for a whole project like that, it will take about 10 minutes maybe to, uh, to record the whole thing. And uh, what I'll do in this case, I'll just stop it there so you can see uh, what, what's happening after that. So now it's just generating the, the video conclusion. Um, in this case, it would be Vortex Spaces, but it could be, uh, could be your own logo and, uh, and website there as well. And 
now I get my upload to YouTube option. So like I said, like all I have to do is just click here on start upload and we'll, we'll start going to, uh, oh, I, I did it. <laughs> I didn't want to send that uh, have video there, but still I've just done it. Uh, here you can change the title. You can also change the description. Um, here, if I make it bigger, you can see a bit of uh, what was recorded already. So you've got the intro uh, of the video and then we'll just start, you know, project name, presented by, then it goes around the project like that. And then the conclusion. So, uh, you know, some, some of the options, if you click here on more options uh, for YouTube, you can go in and change the privacy settings. So by default, it will be uh, unlisted. Uh, on YouTube, you've got three different types of privacy settings. You've got unlisted, private, and public. Public, it's pretty easy. It's, you know, it's uh, when you go on YouTube, if you see a video, it's it's public. So, you know, if I go on your channel, all the videos I'll be able to see are public videos. So everybody, everybody has access to them. Then you have also the unlisted videos. So that means if I go on your channel, I will not see those videos. But if you send me a link, uh, so just a URL link that you can send me by email, I can open it on any devices. That will work. That's very easy and simple to use. Um, and after that, I can take that uh, link and share it with my friends and family if I want. So you kind of create like a small, uh, you know, viral marketing within the family of your customer. And then what most people will do is that, uh, you know, once the project is done, sold or installed, you can just go back to your YouTube channel and change those unlisted videos uh, to public video. So then uh, they all becomes, uh, you know, publicity for your company that you can start sharing after that on uh, on Facebook and uh, and. Um, and uh, YouTube and LinkedIn and all of those uh, different channels as well. So, and then finally, you also have the private videos. Uh, private videos, that means you need to be yourself logged into your YouTube account to be able to see those videos. So you cannot really share them. Um, and actually, I, I believe you can, you, you might be able to share them with special permissions or something like that. I'll probably need to um, double check on that. But yeah, so like I said, like with the unlisted, it's uh, it's pretty simple with that. Uh, you know, you, so you can share with your customer and nobody will get frustrated for any reason because it's not working or it's not the right format or or whatever. And then um, what I, I'd like to uh, do now that we're uh, pretty much at the end of the, the webinar, I'll just put my email address there. So I'll just like jblackburn at Vortex. Dot io. So, you know, if you have any questions or anything, just send me an email. You can also, uh, if you come on our website, there's a chat window there where you get to uh, chat with me um, or, or somebody else there. So, uh, you know, don't hesitate and go and uh, ask us any questions that, you, that you'd, you'd like. Um, then, you know, we offer a free trial of the application. So if you want to have a 30 day free trial, just send me an email, uh, I can arrange that for you. Um, and then otherwise the prices of the license is uh, 13 50 for one license for a year. It's a floating license. So that means you use a username and a password. You can install the application more than one computer, but just use it at one place at a time. Then there's uh, discounts for uh, multiple licenses as well. So uh, hopefully it's been a good learning experience for you guys today. And um, I, I was not too, uh, too quick or too fast, I, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. Sure. Shouldn't continue on being too fast there. Um, so uh, yeah, hopefully it's been a, a good time for you guys. And uh, just get back to me if you have any questions and uh, have time, uh, have fun with uh, Vortex Spaces. Have a good day.